today I'm going to show you how to use this instead of this to power this. But first things first, why? Because I know there will inevitably be some people that say, oh, why even bother? It's a $3,000 detector. So why fuck around with it? So why even skimp on batteries? Where? Well, yeah. Legitimate batteries from a reputable supplier are relatively cheap. Only $65 or $80, for instance, cheap when compared to the detector. Yeah. If you can afford it, then yeah, you could easily go and drop some cash. But where's the fun in that? But with all that being said, this is only worth doing for some people in some circumstances. Basically only if you already have the extra batteries and chargers. It just wouldn't make sense if you're starting out from scratch. The cost of buying quality batteries and a charger will equal or exceed the cost of just going with more of the same batteries you've already got in almost all circumstances. I used Tinkercad to design this, as I usually do with these types of things. So you can see the componentry here, uh, fairly simple, made up of a total of only seven parts. And then here you can just see a quick view of what it's going to look like when it's done. So I just used a regular bolt to make the positive terminals with. This was just an M8 by 40 mil bolt I think high tensile it was just what I had laying around nothing specific it would have been better to use a probably thinner bolt hence why I'm machining it down here just making a little taking a little bit of weight off really now I'm just rounding off the head of the bolt which is kind of unnecessary but it's just an aesthetic thing that I wanted to do And the final job on the lathe was just to face the top of it down, thin it out, and also machine in a little nub for the spring. And now just a quick grind on the bench grinder to get it down to the right length and just to clean up that little end bit a little bit. And here we have the finished positive terminals all machined and ready to go. Looking good, you'll see how those fit in a minute. So yeah, I'm cutting these parts out on the CNC mill. I'm aware most people won't have a CNC mill at home, but I do, so I can do it because it's the quickest and most accurate way I can do it, but you could easily do this by hand if you, if you needed to. And this is what it looks like directly off the CNC machine. So I'll just go and clean that up a little bit. So here we have it, all cleaned up. Only thing to do now is cut them off the tabs. And you can see the remnants of the tabs here, so I will just uh, use a blade to clean them up a little bit and then just quickly touch them on a bit of sandpaper. And then we'll be ready for assembly. So straight up, I tried one off camera first and realised that I need to do it with the bolt in it to keep everything straight and true. I also just rounded off the ends of these long vertical ones just so they would fit in the slots you can see there in the base plate.
To glue it all together, I'm using ABS slurry, which is just ABS plastic dissolved in acetone. Time to put the final piece on now. Once we get this, it'll be technically fully assembled. And I just take one of the 18650s and put it in and then squeeze all the, uh, the long vertical ones in just to make sure they're in as far as they can go and to make sure you get a nice tight fit up against the battery. And there we have it, basic assembly done. And you could technically use it at this stage. It fits in the detector, but it is very tight fit as I machined it to be an exact fit. So the next step will be a little bit of finishing. So just some quick sanding, this took no more than like two or three minutes, just to take off just a tiny bit around the outside to see if we uh, can get a nice fit inside the battery slot without any movement at all. There we go, perfect. Goes in and out easy, but there's no movement at all, that's exactly what you want. So it's technically ready to go at this point, do the final assembly, put the terminals in and it would be good to go. But because I'm me, I like to do a little bit extra just to make it that little finishing touch on top. I'm going to just be rounding out all the outside edges, just so, so it feels nicer in the hand at the end. So I'm just using a blade to do this, just scraping a blade up and down a few times up each one and it just cuts off and takes that edge off. And this is what it looks like when all the edges have been rounded off. Not sure how easy it is to tell, but it definitely feels a lot nicer in the hand. Second to final step is to daub a bit of ABS slurry into all the corners. This will just help strengthen it a little bit and gives it a little bit of a different look. It also sort of rounds off those inside edges, as you can see, as I've just finished here. This is what it looks like after it's dried, and I dipped the whole thing into a bit of acetone to give the whole thing a shiny complexion. So the final assembly step is basically just putting the positive terminal onto the plastic part. I left a little bit of thread on the bolt just so I could use a nut to secure it on there. Probably ideally you would have left, left the hex shape on the head as that would have made it easier to tighten on there but it doesn't need to be crazy tight and I can just use the pliers on there. And here we have our first final look at it. Fully assembled now and ready to go. And we'll just stick the battery in real quick so we can see what that looks like too. Looking good, if I do say so myself. I saw this 3D printed kit available online and what caught my eye was the fact that they showed a weight there. So I was keen to see how mine would compare once I'd finished them up, so uh, let's have a look. 127.2. Not bad at all. And yay, mine are lighter than those ones that were available. Thank you very much. And it worked out nicely, both of them turned out to be exactly the same weight. So yeah, couldn't have turned out any better. And in case anyone else is interested, I also weighed my four rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries and just four regular alkaline batteries, Dunlop ones in this case. So we'll pop those up on screen now and you can just see the weight difference. So yeah, you can see the weight savings with the 18650s are quite significant.
In the past, I'd accidentally bent the spring inside the battery compartment lid. Uh, apparently, when I put it down, it didn't go on in the center, and then it, it bent, and when I pulled it off, it was bent to the side. And this was the battery in question that it happened to. You can even see along the top where the spring wasn't centered. So the idea with the nub on the top of my battery was to make it smaller than the size of the ring on the end of the spring, in which case that spring would fit over the nub and prevent it from moving sideways, so it would keep it straight and prevent it bending again in the future. So we'll see how that works, but it looks like it's going to work pretty well. And now for the final test. Does it all work? Fingers crossed. Firstly, they fit in beautifully. There's no room to spare, they don't jiggle about at all, but, but they're not tight at all either, so it's just an absolutely perfect fit on them. And we have life. All right, so that was a success. And well, I guess that's that. Not much more to say, really. I only just finished them, so of course I haven't taken them for a proper test yet, but when I do, I will definitely report back in a video. Probably not a dedicated video, but I'll definitely mention it in one of my other videos in terms of battery life and if I can even notice the weight difference, which I doubt I will. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.